A traditional urine drug test tests for five drugs plus extended opiates. So you have amphetamine, which also is methamphetamine and ecstasy. You have opiates, which is hydrocodone, hydromorphone, oxycodone, oxymorphone, codeine, morphine, and heroin. You have THC, which is only Delta 9. Um, you have PCP and you have cocaine. So that's your traditional drug test. That's what the Department of Transportation tests for. It's what the federal government tests for. That's your traditional drug test. A urine drug test typically goes back somewhere around three days. Some opiates might be a little bit longer, but traditionally it's gonna go back about three days. Um, as far as hair testing goes, you're getting a much longer window of detection. So in hair testing, you're looking at uh, a couple things. First of all, one of the big misnomers is that it's a hair follicle test. Well, follicle, you would actually be pulling the hair out of the head. And that's not what we do. We cut it as close as we can to the root ends right here and keep them aligned. And we're gonna cut from like five different places because you need about 200 hairs. Um, hair testing is very good for determining long-term use. So if you're looking at um, if you're looking at drug testing over a period of time, for instance, in the case of hair testing, it's typically going to go back, head hair is going to go back from day 10 to about 90 days. Okay, so you're looking to see patterns of use. We talked a little bit about urine testing. We know it goes back about three days. We know hair testing goes back about 90 days. Saliva testing is one of our newer methodologies. It really isn't that new. It's been around since the early 2000s. But the reason it's become such a big deal is because there's so many states that now allow recreation and medical marijuana use. So I know here in Memphis, you know, Amazon is not currently testing for marijuana for their pre-employment drug testing. Well, there's a reason for that because they, they need to hire workers and most people because it's been decriminalized and everything else, most employers aren't just really aren't that worried about marijuana use unless you're on the job and you have an issue. Same thing with alcohol. They're, they don't care about alcohol use unless you're on the job and you're inebriated. So the, the good thing about oral fluid or saliva testing is it's very easy. It's a swab that's inside your cheek. So I'm watching you swab your cheek. I'm not watching you urinate in a cup, you know, it's none of that. So that's great. You don't have to have a bathroom. You can do it in your office. The other thing that's great is it's, it goes back about 24 hours. Some drugs may go back 48, but it typically with, mar with marijuana, you're gonna see maybe about a 12 hour window. So unless you smoked a joint on the way to the drug test, you're probably okay. If you smoked yesterday or last night, you're probably okay. You're going to pass the drug test. So that that's what saliva. That's why saliva is such a big deal right now. As far as the drug use and trends and new drugs, I mean, we're still seeing the same thing that we've been seeing over the past few years, which is very disheartening. But um, heroin and fentanyl are still just just out there all over the place, especially with the COVID, um, with the COVID variants going on and everything's been shut down for 19 months, basically. Um, suicide rates are just off the charts and most of it is accidental. The opioid crisis is still raging. Um, you know, some of the big companies have gotten sued over it, but it doesn't help the person that's addicted to it. And what happens most of the time is they, in most cases that I know of anyway, they will quit using, they'll get rehab, they'll do whatever, and they slip up and they use again. And most of the time they don't know what they're getting. And if it's fentanyl, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of fentanyl goes a long, long way. And that's where the overdose happens, but, you know, so it's not really suicide. Most of the time it's overdose. Um, but we are still seeing that crisis um, more, more than not. 
Um, obviously, marijuana, you know, is rampant. It always has been. Um, that's our most abused drug. And it's also the one that's, you know, getting decriminalized the fastest. So that's good. Um, as far as recent developments in drug testing, we talked about saliva testing. I think it's really important um, when you look about when you look at usage and you look at abuse. Um, the problem with marijuana in states where it's not legislated is that if you get marijuana off the street, you don't really know what you're getting. You don't know what it's laced with. You don't know what's in it. It's kind of the same thing with CBD. CBD, we can say all day long, well, in Tennessee, it has to be 0.03% of marijuana or less. But do you really know that? I mean, if it's not FDA regulated and it's not FDA approved, you don't really know. So at least in the states where marijuana is regulated, you can actually go into a pharmacy and say, I want to smoke because I have back pain, but I don't want to feel crazy in the head or I, I don't, or you might go in and say, I have anxiety and I need it to relax. And it's almost like you can pick and choose what kind of feeling you want to get from marijuana. So there's a lot to be said for regulation as far as that goes. Um, in the past, you know, that's kind of where we were with medication is that, you know, we would go to our doctors and our doctor says, well, this will work for you. And as long as it was working for you, you didn't feel high or you didn't feel messed up because it only worked on the pain that was in your back or whatever. The problem that happened with the big farm companies that with the oxycodone problem was that they were lied to, the doctors were lied to, and they were not using it. Therefore, they didn't know what it did. And people became addicted and that became a whole nother ball of wax. So, um, saliva testing has a lot of importance because marijuana is gonna be regulated. It's gonna be completely across the board at some point. They're gonna take it off the schedule one drug and it's gonna, it's gonna be regulated at some point. It's a ton of money in tax money. It's just like cigarettes or alcohol. You don't have to partake, but if you do, you're gonna pay. And you're gonna pay dearly in tax dollars, which is fine. I mean, it's how people make money. But saliva testing will come up because it can, it's a good indicator of recent marijuana use. Now, in alcohol, we have a breathalyzer. So you get pulled over, the cops think, you're drunk, they can do a breathalyzer, they can do a field sobriety test. And most of that, well, the breathalyzer is not subjective, but the field sobriety test is subjective. Well, with marijuana, you don't have anything like that. So saliva is going to be our best bet on getting to that place where we know if you're under the influence at this time. I think as more of that gets developed, uh, we'll see more and more of that coming out to look for um, inebriation at this point if you're under the influence right now that's my industry is working very hard to come up with some way of, of dealing with that it's a it's a huge deal